Hello and welcome to the second Bob and Wenford Railway Virtual Pub Quiz. Good morning, evening, afternoon, wherever this video finds you. Now, we've edited the format slightly in comparison to our last Virtual Pub Quiz we had, that live stream two weeks ago. We've changed it round, it's now a video instead of a live stream. There's this bit of a slideshow on in the background. Hopefully to make things work a bit more, less awkwardly, and hopefully to make it a bit more enjoyable for you all. So, without further ado, I shall get started by removing my face and making it slightly smaller. There we go. So, welcome to the Bob and the Wenford Railway Virtual Pub Quiz number two. So, you've got a pen and paper because you will need a pen and paper. So, welcome to our second Virtual Pub Quiz. I'm Matt, volunteer at the Bob and the Wenford Railway. I hope you're doing well wherever this is behind you, whether it's Saturday evening, tomorrow being Sunday or Monday or in a month's time. Hopefully you're coping with the lockdown number two or whatever tier restrictions you are in. Now, please make sure you've got a pen and paper because you are going to need pen and paper. And if you're sitting comfortably, you can pause and make yourself comfortable then start again. We shall begin. So, just a quick warning. Please do not put any of your answers in the comments because you're just ruining it for everyone else who's wanting to have a go. You could, of course, Google the answers and as we go through. But that, that, that just ruins the fun of it, really. So, please, so I advise don't try and use your noggin. But please do not put your answers in the comments. Please happily say hello afterwards or put your score down or write me a love letter by all means. But do not put your answers in the chat or in the comments below. Ooh. So, we'll be following a similar format to last time. There are 20 questions. Each question is worth two points unless otherwise specified. There are a few bonus points along the way. Each is also worth, each is worth one point. And there are 47 points in total, just a little less than last time. And I have put a few multiple choice questions in there, just to help you if you don't actually know. Some questions you could probably guess, some railway trivia questions, and some questions specifically about the Bobbin and Wenford. So without further ado, let's begin. So, question one. Railways are measured measured in miles and chains, but how many chains are there in a mile? Is it A, 50 chains, B, 100 chains, C, 80 chains, or D, 1,000 chains? There's two points available here. Railways are measured in miles and chains, but how many chains are there in a mile? Now write your answers down on your bit of paper, and... If I'm going too quickly, you can always pause and give yourself a bit more time to think before moving on. So, question number two. What width is UK standard gauge? That's the track gauge. Question two. What width is UK standard gauge? Is it A, five feet, B, four foot, eight and a half inches, C, three foot, or D, seven foot and a quarter inches. What width is the UK standard gauge? Two points available here. And a bonus point, can you identify which one of those multiple choice answers is the GWR broad gauge? The gauge that the GWR originally built the railway to, and then did a major operation, the uh, gauge conversion to standard gauge. Question two, what is the UK standard gauge? And your bonus point, which one is the, broad, G, the GWR broad gauge, Brunel's original broad gauge? Question number three, in railway terms, what does the word up mean? In railway terms, what does the word up mean? Two points available here. And question four, just for the sake of completeness, if you've worked out what the word up means, you should know what the word down means. So, what does the word down mean? Question four, in railway terms, what does the word down mean? Two points available here. Now, question five, I have not got any photos for, because I didn't want to set off a bit of rivalry between the Great Western and the London Northeastern. 
So, I've left it blank in terms of photos, but question five. Which steam locomotive was the first to ever reach 100 miles per hour? Question five. Which steam locomotive was the first to ever reach 100 miles per hour? Two, two points available here. And a clue, it was green. Moving on. Question six. What four companies were created or amalgamated in the 1927 Grouping Act? Question six. What four companies were created or amalgamated in the 1927 Grouping Act? There are four points available here. One for each of the railway companies you get the you mention or get the right answer for. What four companies were created in the 1927 Grouping Act? Four points available there. Question number seven. Why were the Great Western Railways King Class best steam locomotive ever built? But why why was the King Class never allowed beyond Plymouth and into Cornwall? Because you'll you'll probably well know that when a Cornish Riviera left Paddington, it was probably behind a King. Yet on arrival at Plymouth, the King was taken off and substituted for a castle class or a hall class or a manor class. But why were the King class never allowed beyond Plymouth and into Cornwall officially? Two points available there. Question 8. In what year did Brunel's Tamar Bridge open, which finally connected Cornwall and the West Cornwall Railway and the Cornwall Railway and the Bob and Weybridge Railway to the National Rail Network or the Great Western Network? Question 8. In what year did Brunel's Tamar Bridge open that finally connected Cornwall to the National Rail Network? Two points available there. And I'm sure you all know the odd design of the uh, Tamar Suspension Bridge. Built as such to allow ships of such height to actually go underneath it. Not that they ever do these days. Two points available there. Question 9. I have to put something in for the diesel fans because sadly, for some reason, the world doesn't create enough steam fans and there are diesel people out there and even worse there are some electric people out there but we won't mention them but for the diesel fans question nine the class 52 locomotives were affectionately known as the what question nine the class 52 locomotives were affectionately known as the what two points available there and the bonus point available why were they called that Two points available there, one for the bonus point. Question 10. What are the names of the two Port of Par tanks that are resident at the Bobman and Wenford Railway? Two points available here. What are the names of the two Port of Par tanks resident at the Bobman and Wenford Railway? And your bonus point, why are they built as they are? Clues in the name Par. Now, sadly, these two locomotives aren't actually in service at the moment. Uh, what I remember, Alfred and Judy are undergoing separate overhauls and bits of restoration work uh, with the help of the Clay Wagon Project. Um, and hopefully they will be out steaming again sometime in the near future. Question 11. What is the famous, long-standing nickname for the Great Western Railway? Question 11. What is the famous, long-standing nickname for the Great Western Railway? Now, there's two points available here. Excuse me. Now, the next few questions are courtesy of our infrastructure and Engineering manager Chris Hatton has got a few where's this uh, questions about the Bobbin and Winford Railway. Some are easy, some are fairly obvious, and some are fairly obscure. So, at least there's some picture rounds in here. So, question 12 Where's this? Where's that photo on the Bobbin and Winford Railway? Two points available here. Question 12 
Where's the location of this? I can give you a clue. The river that's just in the foreground of the photo is the River Foy. But where exactly is that? If you want to have time to think, give yourself a bit of a give your noggin a bit longer to work it out, you can obviously pause and start again when you think you've got the answer and write the answer down on your paper. Question 13. Another, where's this? Where is that lovely photo from? You'll notice on Monday, that being Monday just gone, uh, our maintenance Monday did have a photo of this and was a pretty big clue as to A, what's going on and B, where it is. And take note of the big green shed in the background there. Gives it away. Two points available here. Question 14. Where's this? Question 14. Where is this? Now, if you were at one of our open days in late September, late September, October, and went down to the signal box, bit of a clue, you may have been taken down here by either myself or one of the signalling technicians or one of the signalmen who are about to have a look in this particular room and what goes on there. Arguably one of the more important sides of the safety aspect of the railway. But where is it? And question 15, the final where's this? Where is this? Now I will accept if you could just give me the branch name. Is it the Bobbin Parkway or the Boscarn Junction? But, or even better, its exact location. Now I know there are some volunteers who are going to be like, yes, I know this, and I do too. And there are, if, if, every bridge has got a number, so if you are smart enough to zoom in and work out the number on the bridge, you might be in for a winner there. But where exactly is it? Feel free to pause, give yourself a bit longer to try and work it out. And question 16, back to the multiple choice. So you've got a 1 in 4 chance if you're just guessing these. So, question 16. How many bridges do you think the Bob and the Wenford Railway has? Question 16. How many bridges do you think the Bobman and Wenford Railway has? Now there are two points available here. So is it A, 12, B, 100, C, 72, or D, 24? two points available here and your bonus point which bridge has an a and a b one point available for that bonus point question 17 how many sleepers does the bobman and wenford railway have is it a fourteen thousand B, 1,000, C, 100, or D, 20,000? Question 17. How many sleepers does the Bobbin and Wenford Railway have? Two points available here. And if you give it a good guesstimate, you'll probably work it out because 100 seems a little low for six and a half miles of track. Question number 18. How many men does it take to move a length of rail? Question number two. How many men does it take to move a length of rail? And they're a lot heavier than you think. Question 18. How many men does it take to move a length of rail? Two points available here. Question 19. Another multiple choice, so have fun guessing. How many sets of points does the Bobman and Wenford Railway have? Is it A, 50, B, 24, C, 6, or D, 20? Question 19. How many sets of the points does the Bobman and Wenford Railway have? 
two points available here. Let me have a quick think. Again, if you're thinking, if you're having a good guesstimate, think about it logically, how many stations we have. And if you've been to the railway, how many sidings have you seen? Kind of gives a good guess. And finally, question 20. How many inches of mercury does a Great Western Railway locomotive create in its vacuum brake? Question 20. How many inches of mercury does a GWR loco create in its vacuum brake? Is it A, 21, B, 14, C, 0, or D, 25? And bonus point, how many in inches of mercury do Southern Railway, LMS, LNER, BR, or industrial locos create? Because they are different and occasionally can cause brake problems when two separate lo when a Great Western locomotive was used with another company or BR locomotive. How many inches of mercury does a Great Western Railway loco create in its vacuum brake? A, 21, B, 14, C, 0, or D, 25. At the bonus point, how many inches do other locomotives create? What was the what was the standard? So give you a little bit of time to have a think. And uh, that is the quiz. I am going to repeat every question quickly, so do listen closely. So do listen closely if you missed a question. So, question one. Railways are measured in miles and chains, but how many chains are there in a mile? A, 50, B, 100, C, 80, or D, 1000. Question two. What width is UK standard gauge? A, five feet, B, four feet, eight and a half inches, Three, C, three feet, C, three feet, and you got it wrong there. D, seven feet and a quarter inches. And the bonus point, which one of those is the Great Western Railway broad gauge? Question three. In railway terms, what does the word up mean? And in turn, question four, what does the word down mean? Five. What steam train was the first to ever reach 100 miles per hour? Six, what four companies were created or amalgamated in the 1927 Grouping Act? Four points available, one for each rail railway company you think of. Seven, why were the Great Western Railway King Class never allowed beyond Plymouth and into Cornwall? Eight, in what year did Brunel's Tamar Bridge open that finally connected Cornwall to the National Rail Network? Nine, the Class 52 locomotives are affectionately known as the what? And the bonus point, why? 10. What are the names of the two Port of Par tanks that are resident at the Bobman and Wentford Railway? And your bonus point, why are they built as they are? 11. What is the famous, long standing nickname of the Bobman and Wentford Railway? Question 12. Where's this photo taken? Question 13, where's this photo taken? Question 14, where's this photo taken? Question 15, the final where's this question, where is this photo taken? Question 16. How many bridges do you think the Bobbin and Wentford Railway has? Is it A, 12, B, 100, C, 72, or D, 24? And your bonus point, which bridge has both a bridge A and a bridge B? Question 17. How many sleepers do you think the Bobbin and Wentford Railway has? Is it A, 14,000, B, 1,000, C, 100, or D, 20,000. Question 18. 
How many men or women does it take to move a length of rail? Question 19. How many sets of points does the Bob and the Wenford Railway have? Is it A, 50, B, 24, C, 6 or D, 20? And finally, question 20. How many inches of mercury does the Great Western Railway locomotive create in its vacuum brake? Is it A, 21, B, 14, C, 0, or D, 25? And your bonus point, how many inches of mercury do the other 7 rail, LMS, LNER, BR, and industrial locos create in their vacuum brake? And there's a repeat of all the questions. Now I will let you have a couple of minutes to think your answers through, use your head, work out like what you think the answers are. Uh, YouTube bits of paper, just check you've got all the answers you want down. If you've missed a question, even though I've done them twice, do go back and have a look, because you can just pull the red, red bar back to wherever you want it, and see how many questions, see what questions uh, you may have missed, so you can get the, so you can find out your answers to those. And I will start with the answers in a couple of minutes' time. Hope you're all looking forward to Christmas. It is nearly December, which means nearly out of lockdown too. Hope you're all doing all right with lockdown too. Some people found it easier than the first one. Some people found it a little bit harder. I can understand why for both perspectives. Now, hopefully you've been able to uh, get all your answers down on your bit of paper. If you want a bit more time, please feel free to pause the video now and you can go have a few more minutes, however, however long you really need. Uh, a few minutes, a few hours, a few days, a few weeks if you're really struggling. But I'm going to get started with the answers, so listen closely. Or if you don't want to spoil it yet, please do pause the video. So, question one. The railways are measured in miles and chains, but how many chains are in are there to the mile? The answer is C, 80. There are 80 chains to the mile. Two points available there. And a quarter mile is obviously going to be 20. Half a mile, 40. Three quarters of a mile, 60. And if you are very in on the railway scene, you know that on like route maps and diagrams, everything will be measured is in how many miles and chains it is away from London. So you'll notice on Bob and Parkways, up platform, platform 2, there is a 276 mile post, and that means Bob and Parkway is 276 miles away from London via uh, Bristol Temple Meads. Question 2 What width is UK standard gauge? It is 2. No, it is B. 4 foot 8.5 inches. The standard track gauge is is 4 foot 8.5 inches. Your bonus point there, uh, What which one of those is the uh, Great Western Railway broad gauge that is D 7 foot and a quarter inches one point for that bonus point there now back when the Great Western Railway realised that standard gauge was the way forward and not broad gauge they had to undertake a massive uh, re-gauging the uh, conversion engineering to try and make all their broad gauge stuff standard gauge which was quite quite a feat for many hundreds of miles of track miles to suddenly go take suddenly Bring your rails in from seven feet and a quarter inches down to four foot eight and a half, which is the standard craft gauge for the UK, but also the majority of Europe, Russia, China, parts of America, parts of Africa, it's a standard track gauge quite quite universally. Question three. In railway terms, what does the word up mean? Up ninety nine percent of the time means uh, track towards London, so at Bobbin Parkway, the up main is the track that goes towards London. And question four, what does the word down mean? Well, if up means towards London, down is obviously away from London at Bobbin Parkway, the down platform is obviously platform one, trains towards Penzance, away from London. When you get an up and down main, it normally means it's towards London, but sometimes, say, on near Huddersfield, you've got the up and down Manchester, which obviously means up towards Manchester and down away from Manchester. So it's not always towards London, but majority of the time, the up main is to London, down main away from London. So, question five. 
Which steam train was the first to ever reach 100 miles per hour? It is, of course, Great Western Railway's City of Truro, as it came down Wellington Bank on the up towards Chorlton. It was on a, I think it was an overnight mail. It reached 100 miles an hour down Wellington Bank, which is the current speed limit, uh, maximum permitted speed limit um, down Wellington Bank. Uh, I mean, this is quite a bendy piece of track. I would not want to have been on City of Truro at 100 miles an hour coming down that bank because it is windy. That must have been quite quite a feat of, quite a scary feat of uh, enginemanship, but absolutely brilliant. And of course, it isn't Flying Scotsman. City of Truro reached 100 miles per hour first. If you're from the NER, shush. You've been outvoted. So, question six. What four companies were created or amalgamated in the 1927 Grouping Act? There are four points available here, one for each company. But it, of course, is the big four, the Great Western Railway the London Midland Scottish Railway, the Southern Railway, and the London North Eastern Railway. And you'll obviously know that the green badges and the brown badges, your Southern Railway and Great Western Railway, are two key rivals into the West Country and the South. And obviously the LMS and the NER, the red and the blue badges, we'll go with that, were rivals getting towards Scotland and the north of the country. Four points available there. One for Great Western Railway, one for London Midland Scottish, one for Southern Railway and one for London North Eastern Railway. Nice to see that GWR and LNER have made a comeback in our modern world of train operating companies and franchising. Not that fran fra although franchising is a thing of the past if you're up to date on railway knowledge. Now, question seven. Why were the GWR King Class never allowed beyond Plymouth and into Cornwall? And it is officially that the King Class was supposedly too heavy to cross the Tamar Bridge. Um, although, although it's officially stated that they never ever entered Cornwall, there is a, there are a couple of unofficial reports saying a King Class on a couple of times did take trains across the Tamar Bridge into Cornwall. No bother. King Class has of course visited the Bobbin and Wentworth Railway on one occasion. Sadly, I can't remember when or what King Class it was, but the King Classes have been to Cornwall since uh, they were withdrawn. But officially, they were never allowed to cross into Cornwall across the Tamar Bridge because they were too heavy. Question 8. Uh, in what year did Br Brunel's Tamar Bridge open that finally connected Cornwall to the National Rail Network? It is, of course, 1859. If you've ever been across the Tamar Bridge or seen pictures, you'll know it says 1859 at the top of the first portal into the bridge. Um, sadly, it was completed only very shortly after Brunel died, so we never got to see the masterpiece of a suspension bridge it is, which is a shame, but still standing to this day, still taking trains which is absolutely brilliant, and still connecting Cornwall to the National Rail Network. Two points available there. Question 9. For the diesel fans, the Class 52 locomotives are affectionately known as the what? They are, of course, known as the Westerns. Um, and your bonus point, why are they called the Westerns? Is because, as you'll know, if you're a diesel fan or a Western fan or a diesel hydraulic fan, they're all called something like Western Lady or... Western Merchant or something like that. They all had West, the prefix Western on their names and earned the names the Westerns. Two points for the uh, Western bit. One for the reason why they're called Westerns. Question 10. What are the names of the two port of par tanks resident at the Bobbin and Wentford Railway? It is, of course, Alfred and Judy, the little green, or they have been yellow at times, little green port of par tanks. And your bonus point, why are they built as they are? Uh, why are they built so small? Um, it's because they have to go through some, go around some rather tight curves down at um, Par. If you've ever been to Par, Port of Par, you'll notice how tight the curves are. Um, hence why they were fairly short. And they're also fairly small, quite low to the ground, because they have to go under the Great Western Main Line, under the Cornish Main Line, which at Par Station is at sea level and level with the uh, Par, Port of Par tracks, but has to climb quite a steep 165 gradient all the way up to St. Austell. So it is a fairly low bridge under the Cornish Main Line uh, for them to go under, and hence while they're built to a similar height as the clay wagons. And hopefully one day the clay wagon project will have us some lovely restored clay wagons to go behind Alfred and Judy, and we can have them shunting around like they used to down at par. Question A11. What is the famous long-standing nickname for the Great Western Railway? It is, of course, God's Wonderful Railway. And when you see parts of the Great Western, the Bobbin and Wenford or the Cornish Main Line, or the South Devon Main Line, or the Riviera Line, and you get a dullish seawall kind of 
show you why the Great Western Railway is so great. It is gorgeous, beautiful, always built in lovely countryside with lovely views. Very, very brilliant piece of engineering. Uh, and now for the photo rounds, the where is this? So, question number 12. Where is this photo taken? It is, of course, the Foy Viaduct. I gave, kind of gave the answer ever saying that is the Foy River. Uh, or bridge number one, if you are a bit of a volunteer who will know about bridge numbers. Bridge number one is the Foy Viaduct, which is a five arch viaduct that goes over the River Foy down at Bobbin Parkway. Uh, on that photo there, just you'll notice the bridge on a slight curve. If you've ever been to the railways, you notice you come down to Bobbin Parkway, you do cross this bridge, and fairly shortly after coming off the bridge, you'll go into Bobbin Parkway Station. It is just outside, and it's quite tall. It's fairly surprising how tall it is. And every once in a while, you get a very lovely photo, one of our uh, staff, abseiling down the side of it just to check that the bridge is okay, which is always a very funny thing to see. Probably quite scary if you're scared of heights. But that is, of course, bridge number one, the Foy Viaduct. Now, question 13. Where's this? This is, of course, Bob, uh, down at Bobbin Parkway. Uh, you can see in the background the there the green shed, which is our free road shed down at Bobbin Parkway where we store quite a few things like our Class 50, the bubble car, Class 10, uh, a few coaches, that sort of thing, are all stored down at Bobbin Parkway. Um, if you are following our any our Facebook social social medias, our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you'll know that uh, we have got quite a bit of maintenance down at Bobbin Parkway at the moment. Or if you've even been down to Bobbin Parkway for an essential journey, um, you'll notice our points are in bits, and they still are. But we are putting them back together, pushing them back together again slowly. The actual turnout there has been replaced. Uh, it's been a bit of an ongoing project because our 08 Gronk Shunter had a bit of issues, uh, but is now back under the way and. Hopefully soon we can have trains running across it again, which will be nice to see. Also nice to see something being put back together rather than just taken apart for once. But that is, of course, down at Bobmin Parkway. Now, question 14. Where's this? Um, this is the Signaling and Telecoms battery room, uh, which is one of the tin lamp huts next to the signal box. So if you did come to one of our open days or have had the privilege of being inside the signal box, or in the S&T battery room, the relay room, um, which just to the side, just to the left of the signal box, um, and there's all the relays, the track circuits, and the signal repeaters, and all the electrical, technical, technical stuff that I won't go into because people just get bored. Um, also all the batteries in there for all the lights, and hopefully motorised 19 points, all the batteries will be there as well. And finally, question 15, the really hard, where's this one? Where's this? Um, if you're a volunteer, you'll probably know a guard, a driver, a fireman. This is, of course, Bridge 21, or St. Lawrence's Curve, or, for an easy guess, I can sit here. For an easy guess, it is down on the Boscan Junction branch. Um, in the past few weeks, we uh, are one of our engineering teams have been putting some new fences in around the bridges because they've got quite low parapets. Um, just to make them a little bit safer, uh, and that was taken also by Chris Hatton down at uh, Bridge Twenty One on St Lawrence's Curve, or if you just say a bridge on the Boscan Junction line, I'll accept two points for that. It's a bit of a tough one. Get out of the way now. So moving on to question sixteen: How many bridges do the Golden Method Railway has? Now, if you know that. Bridge in the previous photo was Bridge 21, down the Boscan Junction branch. You probably have this question already, but it is D. There are 24 bridges. Now, for six miles of track, that equates to nearly four bridges per mile, a bridge every quarter mile. And if you've been to the Bob Renford, you, Renford, you'll know that we're quite regularly going over or under something. It's Cornwall, it's hilly, it's full of valleys. What do you expect? We've only got one viaduct, however, Foy Viaduct, down at Bobbin Parkway, which you've already seen. But no tunnels, surprisingly. Now, and the bonus point, which bridge has an A and a B? It is, of course, bridge number 13, which is just outside the station at Bobbin General. And it is, it's got a bridge A and a bridge B, 
because on one side, if you're coming out the station, on this side, the Bobbin Parkway branch goes under the road, and on this side, the Bos Boscan Junction Park branch goes under the road. Under, although it is the same road and effectively the same structure, it's two separate tracks, so it is in a bridge A and a bridge 13A and 13B. Question 17. How many sleepers does the Bob and the Wenford Railway have? Now, one in four chance if you are doing a bit of guesswork. It's A, 14,000, or approximately estimated at around 14,000. As you'll notice, as you'll know, sleepers are quite close together, six miles a track, bit of a guessing work, or if you are you know about technical stuff, you've probably done some maths and worked it out. Um, of course, that includes all the sleepers under our loops and sidings and etc. There's just a lot of sleepers um, in general. And question 18, how many men or women does it take to move a length of rail? It is about 12, or if you had a load of rubber players, probably a less if you had a load of children probably a lot more but it's 12 to move 12 people to move around and they're a lot heavier than you think and it's why it's why you see photos of old photos of the great western railway building the railways when they do a photo shoot when they're moving up for rail as well so many people there lined up because they're heavy things but then they have to take the weight of heavy trains so you can understand why question 19 how many sets of points does the bob and the winford railway have uh, it is, of course, it is B24, depending on how you count them. Uh, um, there's quite a few up at Bob in general. There's a couple at Walker Line to the sidings, quite a few down at Bob and Parkway for the station and the shed, and a couple down at Boscar Junction, but it adds up to around 24, around the number. I will accept anywhere something between like 20 and 26, if you have a bit of a guess. Uh, Question 20, final question. How many inches of mercury does a GWR loco create in its vacuum brake? It is, of course, D25. Um, bonus point there here. Um, how many inches of mercury do a Southern Rail, LMS, LMER, BR, and Industrial Loco create? That is, of course, A21. Um, so in a GWR locomotive, you actually have to pull 25 inches of mercury in the vacuum brake to actually release the brakes. <clears throat> but it is only 21 in a in a an area any other steam loco, which can mean if you're working to a GWR loco and another loco at the same time, and you pull the brake a little bit too high, then the other loco has issues actually applying and releasing the brakes can cause issues. A um, little bit of inside knowledge: zero is a full brake application, and fourteen is apparently the natural sort of vacuum mercury pressure in the real world about. So, try to put some little little bits of info in there, but it is, answer is D, 25, and the bonus point is A, 21. Now, that's all the answers. And there they are there, so you can just have a quick read through, if I was speaking too fast, because I, I have a habit of doing that. So there, you can get your answers down. And there you can see what points are available and what bonus points, how many bonus points are available. There are 47 points in total. So I'll let you, let you toss up your answers. Only got to count to 47, which isn't too bad. And I'm running out of coffee. This is depressing. Of course, drinking caffeine endlessly is not a good idea. So, hopefully that quiz was a little bit easier for you. Hopefully the multiple choice questions gave you a bit of a chance if you uh, didn't know too much about Railway Trivia or the Bob and Wenford. Um, tried to put a few slightly harder questions in there with the uh, where's list questions. Thank you to Chris Hatton for giving me those and a couple of the infrastructure style questions. They're all his fine work. Um, if you don't know too much about the Bob and Wenford, hopefully you did slightly better on the trivia questions on the multiple choice you hopefully had a good guess and at least got one of them guessing i'll try to make sure there was at least an a and a b and a c and a d answer in there somewhere so i hope that you got a couple of them right of course 47 is the top score if you got 47 well done now of course if you are still working out what the answers are you can pause and wait a minute but i shall move swiftly on so how did you do? Please do comment your scores down below. Tell me how did, how how you did.
give us a rating out of 10, tell us if you enjoyed it, what we could do better, and if you'd like another virtual pub quiz, uh, we are happy to make more if there is people who want more railway trivia questions. Um, we'd remember to like, subscribe, share this with amongst your friends, or if anyone wants to visit the railway, give, us a, give them a little bit of flavour of what we can do when you can show this to them. Uh, and obviously share with your friends who haven't seen this before or not yet done our pub quiz. Down in the comments, please do not put your answers. I'm going to say that again. Do not put any answers in the comments because that just ruins it for everyone else. Um, if you do, I will just delete comments because I'm annoying like that. Um, and if you did get 47 points out of 47, I will tag your comment to the top so everyone can see that you're the person with the bragging rights for winning. That is your prize, bragging rights. You can gloat all you like that you got 47 out of 47 on a virtual pub quiz. What an achievement. Well done. Um, for those of you who have joined us, thank, thank you for taking part. I know I'm not live like last time, but thank you for taking part. I hope you did well. Even if you scored really low, you came, you, 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 came, you took part, hopefully enjoyed yourself. And that's what it's all about. A bit of fun. It's not about the winning or getting high scores. Although if you did get high scores, well done. If you got a low score, you're still here. You're taking part. You're still hopefully keeping yourself sane and alive. Uh, and that's the main thing at the end of the day. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. And what was it? 41 minutes of trivia. Bob and Murphy Railway fun. So I shall leave it there. Uh, please feel free to obviously watch back. Well, well, you can also go back, see the answers again. Uh, show your friends. Try and beat your friends at this. Um, I hope you have enjoyed today's pub quiz. Um, hope you're all well, wherever you are. And hopefully you, if, you're, if you're watching this, it's on Saturday evening when I upload it. Uh, have a good evening. If you're watching this in the morning when you get up, have a great day, and generally have a good Christmas as well. Merry Christmas to you all. Sorry we're not doing any Christmas Santa by Steam or Christmas dining. It is very sad, I know, but external circumstances and COVID-19 pandemic and ongoing restrictions and the current lockdown have kind of made things slightly impossible for us, which is a damned shame. But hopefully next year we'll be full steam ahead. But anyway, leaving on a lighter note, thank you for taking part. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do take care and we'll see you next time.